A very warm welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are in good today. Seventh October, twenty twenty day is Wednesday, and I would like to start today's a discussion with this thing. I would say that don't wait for an ideal situation. See, the thing is. I'll give you one example, right? And I think uh, this will be more than enough. You can apply it uh, in any situation with any task or any dream project uh, that uh, you want to work on. So let's say if if I want to prepare for a particular examination, if I say that I will read, I will prepare when I will have my own independent uh, separate room to study, when I will have a sort of library with lightning, with a study desk, with internet connection and everything. Once I'll have all these tools, then I will start reading or start preparing for this examination. This is a wrong strategy. The right strategy is that even if I am having two books with me at present, I don't have any money, I don't have anything, I have these two books and I know these two books. I know this thing about these two books that these books are good for this examination. I can start reading these books. It may take a few weeks or a few months time. It doesn't matter. But if I start something, I have started my preparation. And it's not just preparation. Simultaneously, I'm also crafting my personality. I'm also crafting myself. That I am a type of person that will use whatever resources that I have. I will give my best. I will do my best with limited resources as well. And if that day comes when I will have all these things, then I would be a person who knows how to maximum, you know, how to, how to utilize these things to their max. So it's not just, so, you know, in short, in a nutshell, we don't have that much time, but I would say that don't wait for an ideal situation. Use whatever you have now. Give your best to whatever you have. With this, dear friends, Study IQ team has designed a smart course. This smart course is for civil services examination. It will cover your prelims as well as mains examination. And to find out more about it, all you have to do is download our mobile application. Till 8th October 2020, EMI offer is also available. So dear friends, make the most out of it. Download the PDF of today's lecture from my Telegram channel and please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. If you have subscribed our YouTube channel already, can I request you guys to inform three more students about study IQ education. On our table, we have four important articles. The first one is about this Uttar Pradesh government and the way Uttar Pradesh government or police department, which is of course part of uh, the government, the way they have handled this whole Hathras case. There is outcry in Uttar Pradesh. People are protesting. They are not happy at all with the way Uttar Pradesh government has handled this whole Hathras case. I think it was day before yesterday, that was on Monday or Saturday, I'm not sure about the day, but I'm sure about this fact that we have talked about the basic details about this case, that the girl was taken to, uh, the mother found her daughter uh, in a field, uh, uh, she was bleeding from her vagina as well as from her mouth, Right, her back, uh, she was like uh, found with a broken back. Uh, she was taken to a police station and then hospital. And the way things were handled were not up. We cannot call it a professional way of handling this sort of case. And a senior police officer, he said that there is no evidence of rape. He said that uh, uh, we have not uh, found any sort of semen in swabs taken for forensic analysis. So there is no case of rape. What is the definition of rape? I'm not asking you guys, I'm asking this person. It's not just about, uh, it's not uh, just, uh, uh, you know, about this, what do we say, uh, a physical penetration. But here, a senior police officer is saying there is 
uh, he said there is no evidence of rape and what we are finding later on after this protest and after this media attention and everything the final fir includes the charge of gang rape so you can see here what a senior police personnel said right at the starting of this case and later on we find that the suspects have been arrested and the fir includes the charge of gang rape the registration of multiple police cases in uttar pradesh on charges of conspiracy and sedition now the government is uh, hunting down those people who are uh, you know raising their voice against uh, the way this case was handled in a democratic society a political party ngo civil society uni individuals right every one of us are directly indirectly affected by this case and every one of us we have our own right to take a stand against this case against this sort of thing the most important thing is prevention of crime it's like uh, proactively making sure working or creating an environment where uh, people will not indulge in this or of crimes and god forbid unfortunately if we have this sort of rape cases or murder case or anything like that then we should have a situation we should have not a situation sorry we should have an institution this whole criminal justice system should work as smoothly as possible so that in professional environment all this evidence and everything is collected it is processed reported report created and everything and then it is you know reported uh, in a court of law and from there on court will take its own you know uh, time and everything and analysis and going through what's right what's wrong and and then finally reaching to the final conclusion as quickly as possible but in initial stage government was in all deni denial mode government was saying no no and then after this pressure government uh, said that we are going to form one uh, special investigation team and now the chief minister is recommending cbi investigation when it comes to cbi every time when i hear this word cbi investigation the chief minister or the state government is recommending a cbi investigation i feel so sad i feel sad because see dear friends the cbi if you see officers working in cbi uh, are they from australia are they from japan are they no they are indians isn't it and this officers they have as far as i know they have uh, they are as far as i know again right in my opinion they are hand picked they are one of the best we have got so most of them they have, they they used to work for a state government so that means right and and compare cbi with uh, cid now as far as again i know cid's performance is poor it's not uh, an agency it's not an investigation department that uh, we will knock the you know will not knock its doors cid's door when it comes to investigation it's always cbi cbi is uh something that uh, people are afraid about or afraid of and people are you know this bad people are afraid of and uh, good people they think that cbi can solve all the problems that we are facing through they are going through at present whatever so the problem is not human resource right the problem is our uh lack of uh, you can say our lack of uh, this ability Uh, to create uh, this sort of institution in countries like uk in other countries they have this division then when you enter a police department you will find that on one side you will find uniform uh, personnel and the other side you will find uh, people wearing the civilian clothes right uh, they are investigating officers they they investigate things they chase criminals they investigate detective work and sherlock home type of work is done by this people law and order and everything is done by uniform personnel so you there is this uh, distinction so this thing is uh, or this thing this this sort of uh, institution or this sort of division of work will create experts in investigation 
So you don't have to knock the doors of CBI all the time. And we know that how CBI works. At the end of the day, CBI reports to central government. CID reports to your state government. So independence is the first thing, right amount of training. That is the most important thing. Freedom to do their job without any sort of political interference is also important. You can have your best talent, best human resource, but if you don't allow them a right amount of uh, responsibility accompanied by accountability as well as powers, right? Responsibility and powers. If you are giving someone responsibility, then you should give them powers as well to uh, do their job. So without a fine balance of all these things, we cannot see any result. And every time we have to knock the doors of CBI. And I think this is the main problem here. Our criminal justice system, right, we need to upgrade it to the requirements of 21st century. And the use of uh, penal provisions relating to sedition and conspiracy. And the projection of a theory that all protests and political activity against it constitute a plot to overthrow the government. This is something, you know, government is trying to distract uh, every one of us from this case. And this is not how it should behave. There is one more article uh, based on this topic. So we are going to go through, we are going to go through it as well. But before that, something associated with good news as well as some interesting facts. 2020 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine has been declared uh, and there are three winners, uh, Harvey J. Alta, Michael Hutton and uh, Charles M. Rice. And they have uh, received or they have their names are on this list because of the, their work with this Hepatitis C virus. And I'm sure this Choosing someone or choosing these people for working for this uh, hepatitis C will give a boost to those people or those uh, uh, virologists or those uh, scientists or researchers who are working to, f uh, to find out a solution for this SARS SARS-CoV-2 that is coronavirus. So their name, this, uh, this three uh, psycho uh, not psychologists sorry uh, this uh, three uh, scientists or researchers they, they they identified the viral origin of hepatitis C remember we are talking about a virus here and it uh, affects your liver this line is important line their work the noble statement said characterized this form of hepatitis to be a distinct clinical entity caused by an RNA virus of a flavivirus family known as HCV. They can ask you this question in your prelims examination. That because now Nobel Prize is given for hepatitis C, there are chances that uh, they'll ask you for uh, questions about hepatitis B, hepatitis C or mix of them. They can ask you this question that uh, uh, consider the below given uh, below given statements and choose the correct option so the statement will be that uh, uh, you know consider hepatitis C and uh, um, co consider hepatitis C and choose the below given or consider the below given statement uh, something like that you know I'm forming a question right now so it's taking a bit of time for me to process all this information in one go but see are it is caused by an RNA virus that could be your first statement. Second statement could be it is part of this uh, flavivirus family. And then these are the two statements. Then you have to select options. The first will be only one is correct. The second will be only two is correct. Third will be both are correct. Uh, fourth will be uh, both are wrong. Of course, now at present, you know that R it is part of this RNA virus and it is part of this uh, flavivirus family. But what about in examination? So... That's the reason, you know, this side of this sort of information from this sort of information, you can form multiple uh, questions. It was the discovery of hepatitis B virus and development of the first generation HBV vaccine that uh, Baruch Bloomberg, uh, Baruch Bloomberg, whom the young Alter collaborated with, uh, was awarded 1976 Medicine Nobel. However, 
Even the isolation of the HBV only partially eliminated the risk of contracting this severe liver disease transmitted through blood. The third statement could be it is transmitted through blood. It is a fourth statement can be it is a uh, it is a disease or it is a severe disease that affects your liver. And then you will be given option. Option 1, 2 and 3 are only correct. 2 and 3 are correct. 1 and 4 are correct. Or 1, 2, 3, 4 all are correct. No? So pay attention. The circle was only complete with the discovery of HCV. And as per WHO Global Hepatitis Report, uh, 1.34 million died because of this hepatitis C disease. HBV as well as HCV. And we are talking about 2015. So this is a big, means what they have done is a big achievement. Their contribution is huge for entire human race. And, uh, you know, it kills more people uh, than uh, AIDS. Uh, somewhere similar to TB in terms of deaths, but much higher uh, than caused by AIDS. And uh, this is going to help, of course. It And finally, it is going to build, uh, this is like a triumph for humanity over these pathogens and uh, it is going to help uh, those people. It's going to be very inspiring for those people uh, who are working to fight against this corona, or who are working, you know, burning their midnight oil. They're working extra hard to to fight uh, or to find a solution for this uh, coronavirus, of course. Now, the next one is uh, the disintegration of the criminal justice system. Dear friends, uh, a few days ago as well, we have talked about this topic. Uh, just now we were talking about this. Uh, so what is new in this thing? The new thing is, it's a very interesting observation that a majority government makes the laws. Right? A parliament or this government will make a law. And it is the government who controls the investigative machinery as well. So that means... What is right, what is wrong is decided by the government and then it will be very selective when it comes to crimes. Few crimes are big for government, few crimes are small for government. Crime is a crime. There is a very interesting book called The Forged Coupon written by Leo Tolstoy and uh, this uh, story or this book is one of the favorite story of Mahatma Gandhiji as well. So this story, it goes, I means I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but I can tell you a brief about it, that a small crime can, you know, the chain of reaction that it can trigger. Uh, and in this book, uh, this book, the writer has said, like what it, he has project, he has displayed or he has explained to us that how a small crime, it may look a very tiny thing. A father is not happy for some reason and he scolds his son, he is angry on his son and this son is very angry and then, then he goes out and then he buys something and he pays uh, you know he gives a forged coupon or a, you can say a fake currency and because of that thing someone um, you know loses his job and then that person is on the street he's you know out of job and everything his life is ruined and then murder takes place and so, so the whole chain is it gets bigger and bigger same thing goes with good thing. If you do a good thing, then it will create a, you know, the ripple effect will create a huge amount of good things. And same thing applies with bad things. So a crime is a crime. You know, we have various different types of punishments for various different types of crime. The problem is its implementation, right? Application and implementation. Punishment can only arise upon a judgment of conviction at the end of a trial. And that's how it should be. But in our country, criminal justice system is in shambles. What happened with Vikas Dube? Of course, he was not a, a you know, he was not a person who was, means I'm, I'm not saying he is uh, a gentleman or he was not a, a good person, right? As far as his, he was a notorious gangster and the whole world knows about it. But that does not mean that you, uh, shoot him like a dog on the street not at all acceptable because here one uh, erstwhile or ex supreme court judge said that now this now this government is not afraid about whether the story will be accepted or rejected people will believe it believe in the story or not 
doesn't matter just kill that person the reason is that vikas dube was uh, you know running away and at that point of time the media reports were also saying that big names are involved big politicians maybe big uh, officers maybe big business personnel uh, business person maybe that truth never came out because if you carry out investigation then he will give name of uh, today or tomorrow he will give the name of those names with whom he was working for or working with but he was killed so chapter is nearly over and nothing happened to those people who uh, were part of this encounter anti citizenship act protests people were uh, then their name as well as their photos their personal details were uh, were displayed on big hoardings in various different parts of uttar pradesh the problem here is all of this is before a court convicted them of this act so the government itself will decide who is a criminal and who is not before a court and you know what happened here the government was not the police was not willing to register even a single case of rape it has swiftly registered at least 19 cases regarding an alleged conspiracy to use the incident of political purposes to show the state in a bad light crime in india data says that the police are seemingly super efficient but our courts are super slow police will file their case and everything quickly but then it will take ages for a court to go through the whole thing and to process this whole information or this whole case and take it to its logical conclusion it takes 10 years or more than that as well so the more the gap the bigger the confidence of this people and you know how it works that someone if you file an fir and if that person is well connected then that person will uh, not go behind the bars that person will be will start you know he will be an absco- he will turn into an absconder and after he will get bail and everything then he will Uh, directly come to a court and things so he'll never be or hardly he will be behind the bars and those people who are behind the bars if they have money muscle power right context then they are getting everything from liquor from whatever you demand right whatever you want you will find that in uh, your jail room television mobile phone internet connection you name it right we have jails in our country where everything from they they order food pizza and everything I'm sure you'd be aware about this thing if you are not then I want you guys to explore the world in which we are living go out to chat around with people who are like working in in police department and you will find so many things practical thing that are going at grassroots level so I have one question for you we have discussed about this thing what are your suggestions how we can improve uh, this situation how we can upgrade our criminal justice system we have talked about a few suggestions few days ago so stick your bullet points in the comment section approaching the misinformation storm now the writer is saying that when he was uh, uh, back in usa a few years ago uh, a few decades ago when the writer was a young lad uh, at that point of time he got an admission in a very famous uh, university or college in new york and uh, at that point of time local newspapers were writing only local stuff so you in can you imagine a new york newspaper local newspaper will write things only about or, uh, or you'll find news items pertaining to that particular region only nothing outside that no national usa news items no international items and things uh, so this was situation back in like i think 70s or something and in the 80s uh, the pen ultimate decade of us newspaper accidency hundreds of news organizations existed to serve this shorts of towns much like they do still do in multilingual india today in our country we have our own city newspaper isn't it it's more about local city advertisements and and it's more about uh, hardly you will find something that is associated with nation or um, one or two items max national level and hardly one item for international um, category um okay so i'm i'm sure you know this basic thing so i'm not going into the details of this thing now the thing is this was the situation and uh, after in uh, this internet uh, people thought that this will make newspapers or this uh, reading news thing more democratic we will have 
best news right good quality best news will be available at a fingertip but that is not right if you think that you have access to news then i'm afraid to say this thing my friend but you don't you have access to the things that you find on facebook whatsapp and twitter and this news platforms or so called news platforms they are social networking sites they have no journalistic norms anyone can say anything at any time about any topic with sent respect to the for the truth i can say anything i like right you can write any sort of comment right on on facebook on this comment section on live chat section you can means without any uh, sort of uh, reference without any just based on your common sense or just based on what you think now based on your perception you can write whatever you like i was reading this somewhere that uh, in in today's world uh, you know people everyone is a writer everyone thinks uh, that he or she is a good writer everyone is of an opinion or everyone thinks about themselves that what they know is the reality but there are the way things are designed uh, i'm not trying to scare you but i'm telling you the reality that uh, you know if i if i if i talk about uh, uh or if i show you good things about uh, a usa then you will start believing this fact that usa is a very great country if if movies are talking about good things about you if movies are about good things about usa if i show you those news items that say that uh, usa is a great country um, you know then you will start believing in this thing and then once you start believing in it then it will become very difficult for me to Uh, make you unbelieve that usa is not a great country so how information is delivered to you when it is delivered to you what was your mood what were you looking for you know this this is a big market there are experts out there it's like films you know when we see actors and actresses uh, we find them they are so beautiful and they are you know everything but if you see then so much hard work goes into it it's not just about their face right the trainer the person who cre- uh, is preparing food for them he has to do he or she has to be best make a person again the best one Care- camera person again the best one then editing everything so so many people so many professionals are involved and then you see the final product and then we feel that why i don't look like that person because you are just taking a, se- a selfie and that person is going through this sort of processes this many processes so the message here on in a nutshell i can say that uh, there are outlets there are organizations they are they are uh, you know they are injecting seeds in our head what we need to think uh, what are the topics that will be burning topics for the day right that will be talk of the town today and if you if you search for a watch or let's say if you search for a right wing leaning post uh, and if this that is your preference then this algorithms the way they have designed this whole thing you will see more and more of that and the more you see that the more deeper it will get into you if you want to if you surf for something on the internet if you let's say if you are looking for a wrist watch just you know you are surfing wrist watches various different wrist, uh, wrist watches and if you have clicked to some of them if you check their specifications then when you lo- open some other website you will find those advertisements right uh, so they keep on hammering this thing they will keep on whenever you are on the internet they will they will throw you this watch faces and that will uh, create that will maintain this it will it it will keep that soil bit wet you know what i mean that uh, if you have not purchased and even after you have purchased it they are so stupid that they will keep on sending you this watch photos or advertisements again and again so that's how they play around with our head so in today's world particularly in india in usa now most of the people they they their main source of access to news is this dubious internet sources in our country situation is not that bad so this is the right time that we create our own path we create our own uh rules and regulations here so that we can control this sort of thing only then we would be able to control this fake news and bad news and things and that's everything in today's a discussion thank you very much for watching this video this are a few news items and dear friends uh, yesterday i was not well i have uh, informed all of you yesterday only yesterday morning 
so see dear friends uh, i will uh, you know uh, means I'm, i'm fine now but i'm not sure whether i would be able to record the 6th october lecture because uh, you know just uh, apart from being a senior faculty i also look after means i'm a channel director at study iq education so there are other responsibilities as well i have to perform so i'm not surplus in time right everything finishes on right amount of time so um i'm not promising i'm not sure whether i will but i will try my best i i promise that i will try my best to uh, bring 6th october lecture to you so that's everything from my side today and i will see you soon till then enjoy your studies god bless you all jai hind